Standard index form is a way of writing either huge numbers or very small numbers into a format that we can apply more easily to our maths. If we consider an example of the Earth's distance relative to the Sun, how far is it between the Sun and the Earth? Well, it is approximately 150 million kilometres. Now, to use this number day in and day out could come with its problems, in that I could miscount how many zeros I have and therefore my calculations are wrong. Before I show you how to write that in standard form, it's worth considering the basics. 100 can be written as 10 times 10. Alternatively, as an easier method, we could write it as 10 squared. Now, as a rule, what I always say is the indice matches the number of zeros that you need. Now, it's this principle that I want you to bear in mind for later on. So going back to my original problem, how do I write 150 million in standard index form? How do I write it in a form which is the same as this, but I can more readily use? I could write 150 multiplied by 1 million, but that in itself hasn't solved anything. I still have a number of zeros which I need to record and I could lose track of. Alternatively, I could write 1 million as 10 to the 6, the 6 being indicated by the number of zeros here. Now there's nothing wrong with that, and indeed that number does match that. I've not changed how much I've got, but this doesn't obey the rules of standard index form, which says that this number here has to be between 1 and 10. Taking it a step back, I could write 15 times 10 to the 7, so I've increased the indice by 1 and reduced this by a factor of 10. So again, I'm getting closer now. That and that are the same number. This is closest to standard index form, but this 15 is clearly not between 1 and 10. So my final step would simply be make it 1.5 times 10 to the 8. So let's apply this to an example. Let's take 578. That in itself, quite a small number, but it will allow us to try and understand standard index form a little bit better. I need to write this as a number between 1 and 10. So the first thing I would do is do 5.78. Now I can't change how much I've got, so I have to get this back to that. In order to do this, I can multiply it by 100. But standard index form uses indices, so how can I use that as an indice? Well, it would simply be 5.78 multiplied by 10 squared, and it's as simple as that. Let's now apply that theory to a much larger number. Let's take 478 million written in standard index form. I'm going to show you a little bit of a cheat way of doing this. Same principle applies. The number has to be between 1 and 10. I would start with 4.78. I then must multiply it by 10. Now, it's the indice which is the important part. My decimal point in my original number is here. Now, I've placed it here. And that's a jump of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The indice is therefore 8. You must remember the decimal point never moves. It is the numbers which jump over it. But it's easy to do it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. I hope that helps. Typing in standard index form numbers on scientific calculators is really, really easy. And both of these calculators work in the same way. If I consider my original example of 1.5 times 10 to the 8, I simply type in the 1.5. I then need to find the EXP button on both of these. EXP means exponential, and that is your times 10 button. The calculator is then waiting for the indice, so then you need to just simply type in the 8, and your number is then entered in. It's important to remember on this calculator, it doesn't actually show you the times 10 on the display. So don't go typing it. It is there in its memory. It knows that that's in there already. On this calculator, a little bit easier, it does actually show you it on the display.